Our food really is a very big part of our culture. And to be Singaporean is to love Singaporean food. Lah. Every Singaporean have grown up eating Singapore food at the hawker centres, would love and appreciate and miss it when they are overseas. They will all tell you the same thing. They say, I mean, they are laksa. I want my laksa. You know that laksa over there is very good. I missed it. So one of these chakwetiao men was telling me the overseas Singaporeans, they come back to Singapore, they pack 20 packs of chakwetiao, freeze it, and then take it back overseas. So for their family members who are there also missing the same thing. After I came back from a stint overseas, I decided, hey, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, since everybody talks about uh, this Hokkien Mee, that chicken rice, this satay, that laksa, you know, I should just go and try them for myself since there's so much good food out there. And at the same time, I will write my own opinion about what I thought about the food, uh, take a nice photos to put it on the website in order to entice people and get them to salivate and drool, you know. So that's how the blog started, really. Very soon, people say, hey, we like your blog. Can we come and follow you? So, uh, soon enough, within a few months, we had a brigade, you know, or a group going around. The blog is being read by about 6,000 over people every day now. So, every month, we get about 70,000 unique visitors um, and about 400,000 page views every month. I don't think it's the numbers that uh, are relevant, but I think it's the impact that the blog has on readers and on storeholders. Just like uh, a reader who wrote to me uh, recently from Australia, she just went there as a student. She, she, she said, I'm so thankful that you have your blog because I miss Singapore food so much. And this is one of the few ways I can you know, remember uh, what it was like back home. So when I hear that kind of thing, I'm also very happy. For me, I have a soft spot for kids. Whenever I look at uh, charity work or community work, I always feel that it's the children that I want to, to help. So when we visited this uh, place in Sandakan and we saw all these kids not having access to education, I just felt there was uh, something that if there was something we can do to bring education to them and to give them a hope for the future, then I think it's something that is worth working towards. We mobilized all our kakis and then we, we have been organizing makan sessions where, you know, every makan session will collect a little bit and then we're encouraging people to look into this project. So the hope for the blog is that we continue to have new friends, uh, like-minded people who uh, will share the passion for food and also share the passion for helping those uh, who are less fortunate than us. There's nothing worse than eating good food when you're all alone. It's like playing golf and then getting a hole in one, nobody to see you, right? So uh, that's why we always have makan kakis to eat together so that we can you know, share and exchange notes and you know we can say, oh, how good this food is, how good that food is. So today we are at this Yochumei place. The food is really good. It's air-conditioned. It's all you can eat. The prices are really good. So let's go in and check it out. Small porridge. How's the food? Very good. Thanks. What else can I get you guys? Yeah. A few months ago, a local publisher came to me and said, you know, you should think about turning your blog into a book. So I was a, a little bit hesitant at first, but he convinced me that it was a good idea to do it. So the book is all about uh, the best hawker food in Singapore and also about all the things that I found out talking to all these hawkers about the history of different hawker foods. If we talk to our Singapore hawkers, they will all tell you that our Singaporean style bakute really originated in the Clark Key area. There were two groups, huh? there was the Teochews and Hokkien's all vying for jobs. So the stronger group will get the contract or the job. So uh, in order to win the jobs, you have to always show the employer that you are the stronger group. So that was how bakute came to be because it was a dish that the police would eat in the morning to give them 
uh, the energy boost that they need uh, to carry on the back-breaking work throughout the day. When I was researching Bakute, there was only a few lines written about Bakute, and it was a very skewed history, which didn't reflect the Singapore side of the story. So I think that it's a national duty to actually preserve this uh, outside of the story that has been passed down from the generations. You know, in the good old days, after they finish the Makute meal, they'll end the meal with a cup of rice wine, and they'll drink it like in one in one go, like this, and go. Just to show off that they've eaten Bakute. But for me, I just finish off my cup of tea, and it's real shook. You know, uh, I think uh, shook uh, is a word that it should be marketed better, you know. The Japanese have oishi and then the Thais have aroima, you know. Um, and shook is, is such a... Uh, I always say that it's, a, a, it's a, like an expletive, you know, like a bad word, right? When you, when you eat something that is so, you know, so yummy, it's so undescribable, like a plate of cha kway tiao, you know, lively kway tiao with the smoky soy sauce and the cockles, uh, you put it into your mouth, uh, there's only one word that naturally rises up in every Singaporean. Uh. Shook, man! <laughs> and it just releases all the pressure, you know, all the, all the stress level that is all built up, you know, shook! And uh, it just encompasses the, that feeling at that moment. Uh. So I think that, uh, you know, Singapore Tourism Board should actually just market it a little bit more for us. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite dish, if I really have to pin it down to one, it will be fried Hokkien Mee. It's not just basically stirring and frying, you know? it's more than that. There's, uh, there's a lot of um, work involved. And uh, if you do it right, the fire control is right, the taste is amazing. You add in the pork lard, you add in everything else, it's, it's amazing flavor. And Hokkien Mee is really unique in Singapore. If you ask me, I think bak chor mee is one of the most underrated. Uh, dishes in Singapore because when we did a, a poll last year, number three is bachor mee. Bachor mee is actually very near or very similar to your uh, ramen. So why is it that the Japanese, you know, and people around the world can go, go crazy about ramen, but uh, when it comes to bachor mee, we just treat it like it's one of our very uh, ordinary kind of dishes that you you don't pay much attention to. So, but thankfully some. Some of these uh, bachor mee sellers have maybe seen how the Japanese are selling ramen and nowadays they are going towards that direction. So we have this shop for instance that um, employs some uh, techniques, to, they weigh their noodles and then they also make sure that they time every time they cook the noodles. Hopefully la, soon enough we will see uh, people who are selling bachor mee as if the, it's like selling a ramen, uh, setting up a ramen shop. Uh, with air condition, and it's a nice, a very nice environment to actually eat a nice hot bowl of noodles. Mm -hmm.